Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to our today's class. It's our fifth lesson on the fourth topic of Form 3 work, which is called Work Energy, Power and Machines. As usual, let me comment by giving you the quote of the day, which states that you will always have two options in life. One is to make excuses, and two is to make progress. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at machines, and let's start by defining what we mean by the term a machine. So a machine is simply a device that makes work easier. A very good example is the uh, wheelbarrow, whereby you realize that if you carry some luggage on your bare hand, and if you carry the same same lug luggage uh, using a wheelbarrow, it will become easier to carry that luggage using a wheelbarrow as opposed to using your bare hand. Therefore, a wheelbarrow is a good example of a machine. So a machine is just a device that will make your work easier. Then we have some terms which are associated with machines. The first term is what we call the effort, which is denoted by capital E. So effort in physics is defined as the force applied to the machine. And the SI unit for the effort is simply Newton, because remember that effort is just a force. And we did say uh, in Form 1 that uh, the SI unit for any type of force will always be uh, the Newton. Therefore, effort is the force applied to the machine. So, for example, if I have my load here, my luggage, which I want to raise it from this particular point A up to point B up here. So, the force that I will apply on that particular load for it to move, that is, which is denoted by uh, capital E here, this particular force is what we are calling the effort. So, the effort that you have to apply to a given load in order for you to raise it, maybe from one point to another, so that is what we are calling the effort. Then the second term is what we call the load, and the load is defined as the force exerted by the machine, the force exerted by the machine. So in order for me to raise this particular load from point A up to point B, where my load is, the load will be provided by the weight of this particular load. For example, if this particular load has a weight of 500 newton, therefore that becomes the load. So the force exerted by the machine, that is what we are calling the load. And the load in this case is denoted by capital L, which in this case is simply equal to the weight of this particular body, which is equal to the product of the mass of the body and the gravitational force. Then also the SI unit of um, uh, the, the load is simply the Newton, which is denoted by capital N. Then the third term, which is associated with machines, is what we call the mechanical advantage, denoted by capital M dot small a. So that is simply mechanical advantage. And it is defined as the ratio of load to the effort. So for example, if the load is noted by capital L in this particular case, and the effort is noted by capital uh, E, then mechanical advantage will simply be load divided by the effort. Remember when we talk of the word ratio, it means we are dividing or we are comparing two quantities. Therefore, when we talk of the ratio of load to the effort, we simply mean load uh, to effort or load divided by the effort. So that is what we mean by a ratio. So that is simply mechanical advantage. So for example, if uh, the body had a load of maybe, let's say 500 Newton, then maybe you apply an effort of 250 Newton, then the mechanical advantage will be equal to 500 Newton divided by 250 Newton, which gives you a uh, two. Then remember, because mechanical advantage is a ratio, it does not have any units because the units do cancel out. For example, the units for load is Newton. The units for effort is also Newton. So Newton divided by Newton, you will simply get one. Therefore, a ratio does not have any unit. Therefore, mechanical advantage also doesn't have the units. Then velocity ratio, we have another term called velocity ratio denoted by VR, and it is defined as the ratio of the distance moved by the effort to the distance moved by the load. For example, if I'm moving my load from point A up to point B, then in that particular case, the effort distance denoted by DE or the distance moved by the effort will be this particular distance from point A up to point B. That is the hypotenuse of this 
particular load because the load is moving from point A to point uh, B. So it means our effort is simply causing this particular load to move along this particular effort distance. So the, uh, the distance caused by the effort for the body to move from one point to another, that is the uh, effort distance or the distance moved by the effort. Then uh, we are saying that it is the ratio of the distance moved by the effort to the distance moved by the load. So when we talk of the distance moved by the load, we mean the vertical distance from this point up to the upper point here. That is the distance from point C up to point B, the distance DL, that is what we are calling the distance moved by the load, also called the load distance. So this is our load distance for this particular inclined plane, or simply the vertical distance uh, from the ground up to the maximum point to which our load was raised. Therefore, velocity ratio VR will be equal to uh, the ratio of the effort distance to the load distance. Again, remember, ratio simply means we are dividing two quantities. Therefore, we are talking distance moved by the effort, which is noted by DE. So DE divided by the distance moved by the load, which is noted by DL. So DE over DL, that is equals to VR or the velocity ratio. Again, velocity ratio, it is also a ratio. Therefore, the units do cancel out and therefore it does not have any units. Then our fourth uh, the fifth term is what we are calling the efficiency denoted by uh, a letter, a Greek letter called nita. That is, uh, it is written this way. So efficiency is simply the ratio of the work output to the work input expressed as a percentage. You can also define efficiency as the ratio of the work done on the load to the ratio of the work done uh, by the effort expressed as a percentage. Alternatively, you can also define uh, efficiency as the ratio of the product of the load times the load and the load distance to the ratio of the effort by the effort distance expressed as a percentage. Alternatively, you can also define efficiency as the ratio of mechanical advantage to velocity ratio expressed as a percentage. So when we talk of a ratio of the work output to the work um, input, you are simply talking of work output divided by the work input. Then expressed as a percentage, you can see that uh, I'm multiplying by 100%. So that is what we mean by expressing as a percentage. Therefore, mathematically, efficiency nita will be equal to the work done on the load, which is just the same as the work output, divided by the work done by the effort, which is also called the work input. Then you express it as a percentage. Alternatively, remember the work done on the load is simply equal to the load times the load distance. So if you want to find the work done on the load or simply the work output, for example, in this particular case here, you will simply take the, the load, that is the value of the load, then you multiply by the load distance, so DL. So L times DL gives you the work output or the work done on the load. Then if you want to find the work input or the work done uh, by the effort, you simply take uh, the effort E, you multiply by the effort distance DE. So E times DE will give you the work input or simply the work done by the effort. Then of course, if you want efficiency, you simply multiply by 100 or you express it as a percentage. So efficiency can be given by work done on the load divided by work done by the effort multiplied by 100% or it can also be given by work output of a work input expressed as a percentage. You can also give it as load times the load distance uh, divided by load times the, that is the effort times the effort distance, then you express it as a percentage. So from this third definition, we can see that we are taking load times the load distance, but we know that load over effort, we have defined it as a mechanical advantage. Therefore, efficiency can as well be expressed as a mechanical, that is load over effort, which is equal to mechanical advantage, then uh, remember load distance divided by the effort distance. We have here the velocity ratio, which is equals to effort distance over the load distance. So that simply tells you that if you take the reciprocal of the load distance uh, to the effort distance, it will give you the velocity ratio. Therefore, uh, because uh, the load distance over the effort distance is equals to velocity ratio, it simply means that load distance over effort distance will give you the reciprocal of the velocity ratio, which is one over 
VR, the velocity ratio. So mechanical advantage times one, you'll simply get mechanical advantage, then divided by velocity ratio, VR expressed as a percentage. Therefore, efficiency can as well be given by mechanical advantage or velocity ratio expressed as a percentage. Then next, we look at uh, some typical examples. So our first example is that in a machine, the load moves uh, two meters. So if the load is moving two meters, that simply means that is the load distance. When an effort of, uh, when the effort moves eight meters, that is the effort uh, distance. If the effort is 20 newton, that is the E or the effort is used to raise a load of 60 newton, that is the load L, determine part A, the mechanical advantage of the machine. So we know that mechanical advantage is equal to load over the effort and we are told that uh, the load raised is 60 newton. So 60 newton divided by the effort that raised that particular load was of 20 newton. So 60 divided by 20 newton and newton will cancel out. 0 and 0 will cancel out. Then 6 divided by 2 you will get 3. Then remember mechanical advantage is a ratio therefore it does not have any units. Part B, they want us to find the velocity ratio. So VR is equals to uh, the effort distance divided by the load distance or the distance moved by the effort divided by the distance moved by the load. So we are told that in a machine, the load moves two meters. So that is the distance moved by the load, two meters. When uh, the effort moves eight meters, so that is the distance moved by the effort, which is eight meters. Therefore, velocity ratio will be 8 meters by, by 2 meters, which gives you 4, which is a constant without units because velocity ratio is a constant. Then part C, they want us to find the efficiency of the machine. We have just derived the formula and said that the efficiency of the machine is equal to mechanical advantage of a velocity ratio expressed as a percentage. Then mechanical advantage is 3, velocity ratio is 4. So we have 3 over 4 expressed as a percentage which will give us 75 percent question two reads that an effort of 125 newton is used to lift a load of 500 newton through a height of 2.5 meters using uh, the pulley system so if the distance moved by the effort is 15 meters calculate but a the work done on the load again we have just seen that uh, the work done on the load is just the same as the work output, which is equal to load times the load distance. So we are told that um, an effort of 125 is used to raise a load of 500 newton. So the load is 500 newton through a height of 2.5 meters. So remember we said that the vertical height simply represents the load distance or the DL. Therefore, uh, work done on the load, which is equal to work output, is equal to load times load distance. Our load is 500 newton our load distance is 2.5 meters, which is the vertical height, uh, 2.5 meters. So if you take this product, it will give you 1,250 Newton meter as the work done on the load or the work output. Then part B, they want us to find the work done by the effort. So the work done by the effort is the same as the work input or the work that we used, that we had to do in order to raise that particular load from one point to another. And you have seen that work uh, done by the effort or the work output can be expressed as the product of the effort and the effort distance. So we are told that an effort of 125 Newton, so that is the effort 125 Newton, then the effort distance, uh, that is a height of 2.5 using the pulley system. If the distance moved by the effort is 15 meters, so the effort distance is 15 meters, so the product gives us 1875 Newton meter as the work done uh, by the effort or the work input therefore efficiency can be given as the work output uh, to the work input or the ratio of the work output to the work input expressed as a percentage so the work output we have found it as uh, uh, 1250 newton meter uh, 1250 newton meter divided by the work input we have found it as 1875 newton meter remember the newton meter and newton meter will cancel out huh? then we express it as a percentage so this gives us 66 whole number 2 over 3 percent then also have an exercise here that i do recommend you should try at your own free time to gauge whether you have understood the examples and the concepts that we have just done then in case you have any challenges in handling any of the question feel free to drop a comment below this video um, 
giving me the exact question that you have problems in solving. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that you will always have two options in life. One is to make excuses and two is to make progress. So the quote simply means that in life you have two options. Huh? You can either choose to make uh, excuses and remember if you make excuses you won't progress. You can also uh, choose to make progress and remember if you make progress you will not have a room uh, to make excuses. So it is either you make excuses and uh, remain stuck or you make progress and eliminate excuses. So the quote is also reminding us that if we want to progress well in our lives then we must be willing to drop all our excuses and replace those excuses with actions because an excuse is just a defense mechanism used by the people who are not willing to take actions and lastly remember that 99.9999% of the failures in the world come from the people who have mastered the art of the art of making excuses thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson i do not take it for granted in case you are new to the channel kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Thank you very much. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy.